Everyone's talking about the chip shortage and how does that shortage affect the scrap market? Well, let's take an example from Ford. Last month, we saw Ford's output down 33% because they weren't able to get enough chips in to manufacture and correctly produce and finish many of their cars, trucks, and SUVs. So if they are not shipping as many new vehicles, things like the used car market will continue to be, remain high, which means that there won't be as many scrap cars coming on the market because many people are making their cars last longer and they're making sure that they're not getting scrapped, but they're getting repaired because many of the older cars don't have the amount of semiconductor chips that the new cars have. Now on top of that, the massive amount of commodities needed to produce these chips, things like fiber and plastic and gold and all these precious metals, because they're having such a hard time refining them, getting the labor to use them, and because of the supply chain disruptions across the world right now, it's really interesting to see how things are shaking because it will affect the scrap market in the fact that people are not gonna be scrapping older cars as soon right now because they can't find a new car or a used car. So if they're making their existing vehicle last longer, that will eventually slow down as the chip shortage gets shored up and we see more manufacturers, more producers taking shape, but that could take another 12 to 24 months globally just to be able to catch up. And that shows you what a backlog happened from the COVID shutdown of 2020. So those commodities that are needed, while they're out there, they're not getting refined as quickly, made into chips, put into these cars, and when some of these auto manufacturers, they need to slow down production, which means they can't take as much metal in, so some of the people that are producing brand new metal can't ship it out, and that will eventually slow down the scrap price because the overall demand will lessen because these microchips can't get into cars, cars can't get into showrooms, those can't get into people's driveways, and the market will always have some type of a crazy influx, and they'll move all over the place. Let us know. So how do shipping containers affect the scrap market? Well, we've been reading articles about the massive buildup about shipping containers that cannot get over, uh, get unloaded in multiple different ports. One example in California, there were 33 active shipping containers that were sitting out in the ocean because they didn't have time to get unloaded. That affects scrap markets in multiple ways. Number one, people that want to export material over to China from the West Coast, they rely on those shipping containers to get unloaded so the goods can get unloaded, brought into warehouses like Amazon and Walmart and all the major retailers. Once those shipping containers get unloaded, they want to be able to fill them back up with goods to ship them back over to China, Malaysia, and other overseas buyers. Well, if these shipping containers are not getting unloaded because there's A, a labor shortage, B, the shipping containers, some of them, these actual ships, are three times the size of the ships that used to be. So old ships would have two to 3,000 shipping containers on them. Today, there are ships that can contain 10,000 containers. So if it takes longer to get these ships unloaded, that means that all of this raw commodities, these copper, this scrap from the country, from the US is not getting reloaded into these containers to be shipped overseas. That's gonna cause not only a supply problem, but a pricing problem. And another problem is the high shipping rates for these containers going both ways right now, which absolutely will affect the scrap market. Let us know what you think, and until next time, I'll scrap you later.